Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's live stream. I'm Julia. I work for the Study in Sweden team at the Swedish Institute. And, and yeah, welcome to this live stream called Prepare Yourself for Your Sweden Journey. If you're watching this, you probably just got accepted to study in Sweden. Big congratulations to you guys. And to help you prepare for this big journey of yours, we have invited a bunch of international, current international students to answer some of your big questions and to give you the inside scoop what it's like to live and study in Sweden, the Swedish way. At the end, we will be answering some of your questions uh, from the live chat. So make sure to ask away about how to prepare yourself for your Sweden journey. What we won't discuss though is um, the process of applying for a residence permit as we have a live stream next week uh, together with the Swedish Migration Agency um, where we will discuss in detail how to apply for a residence permit. So make sure to check that out. We will neither um, discuss individual questions such as liability or about scholarships. But yeah, let's bring in our guest. We have Edwina, we have Tina, we have Jed. Welcome, you guys. How are you doing? Hello, hi, Julia. Hi. Nice to have you here. Good to be here. Yeah. So let's start off by in, please introduce yourselves. What are your names? Or, well, it's obvious as I just said it, but where do you study and where do you live in Sweden? And yeah, Edwina, if you want to yes. go first. Yes. yes, of course, I start. <laughs> so my name is Edwina. Um, I'm originally from Vienna, Austria, and I'm currently studying political communication at the university in Gothenburg. And this is also where I'm living right now in Gothenburg in Sweden. Cool. Welcome. On to Tina. Yes, um, my name is Tina. I am originally from Germany and I'm studying my bachelor's degree at Malmö University and I live quite close to Malmö as well. Jed. My turn. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> so I'm Jed from the Philippines and I study my master's in leadership for sustainability at uh, the same university as Tina at Malmö University. And yeah, I live in Malmo as well. Yeah. So welcome again, you guys, and all the ones who's watching. And um, yeah, make sure to ask your questions in the live chat and, and we will answer them all at the end. Or hopefully we will answer them all <laughs> if we have the time. And uh, so let's get started. Can you please tell me what made you consider s studying in Sweden? or Sweden in general. Jed, would you like to start? Yeah, um, so I remember it was October of 2019 when I was just, uh, I was on Google one time and then I was um, looking for scholarships to study abroad because uh, I remember when I was a bachelor student many, many years ago, don't ask how old I am. Um, <laughs> I remember one of my dreams was to go on an exchange program abroad but unfortunately, back then, I wasn't qualified. Um, so, you know, after I, I, I finished my school and I had the opportunity to look for scholarships, I was like, you know, maybe this is the time for me to study abroad. And the first thing that came up when I was uh, doing my search was a blog about the uh, SI scholarship, which I, maybe some a lot of our viewers now are also applying for or, or have applied for. And so I just read about the SI scholarship uh, you know, check the, the the requirements and applied for it. I didn't really look for any other destinations apart from, from Sweden, so, yeah. Yeah. And Edwina, what about you? Yeah, so for me, it was more like, I wanted to do something that was quite similar to my bachelor's, which was political science, but also had a bit more to do with media and communications. So. The first thing for me was to just find a program that sounded appealing to me and that interested me. And when I did my research, I found uh, 
my program, Political Communications. And when I saw that it was in Sweden and that the university and studying there was also free of charge, I thought like, okay, this is, I mean, this is the perfect deal. I like the program. Um, I would love to go and study in Sweden because I only heard good things about the educational system. And for me as a EU citizen, it's free of charge. Um, so it was quite a non-brainer to come and study in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. that easy. <laughs> Tina, kind of similar, uh, kind of similar to Edwina, because I applied to a lot of different universities. I applied to uh, American University in Italy, I applied in Canada and everything. But when I applied in Sweden, I ultimately ended up coming here because tuition fee is free for EU citizens. And that was my main yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but as you're now living here in Sweden, is it like you expected it to be? Or is there anything about it that surprised you when you actually came here? Tina, you can go first. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Well, I would say on the one hand, it is exactly like I expected, especially in the summer. Like, it's just so beautiful, kind of like a postcard, mm. beautiful vibes, everything. But obviously, what I did not expect is because I moved here in 2019, September of 2019. Um, and I obviously did not expect a pandemic to happen. So oh, that was not exactly <laughs> how I imagined it. And now <laughs> I've been studying online basically for two and a half years. Um, so that's not really that I got to experience experience that much of Sweden but ultimately I think it kind of matched my expectations that I had previously and in some parts it exceeded them like the educational system which I'm very fond of. Mm. Okay. Jet? Uh, well um, I've never been to Europe before this is my first time in Europe so mm. I really did not know what to expect <laughs> But mm. I think the good thing about it, though, is that I had this like wide eyed perspective on everything, like everything here, even the simplest things got me excited, you know, like seeing rabbits run around in, in parks. You know, we don't have that back home in the Philippines. Uh, mm. uh, even, you know, just convenient public transport, uh, bike lanes here in Malmo it's, it's one of the best in the world. So, you know, um, when I arrived here, I didn't have a lot of expectations, although before coming here, I did a bit of research about. Uh, Swedish culture so that I know like what to expect from the people um, here but even so uh, it's still a completely different experience once I arrived and um, uh, yeah it's, it's been a great experience. Yeah mm. but as you probably done the like longest move <laughs> in terms mm. of like moving to another country have you been living here during the winter? Was oh, that yes. like a big like shock to you or well, <laughs> what did you definitely, think? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Because uh, whenever people would ask me about weather in the Philippines, I always tell them, oh, in the Philippines, you only have two types of weather. You know, we have hot and we yeah. have very hot. So, yeah. so winter here is definitely something that I, I, it was fun at first because I was like, oh, winter, you know, it's my first experience. But after a couple of days, it was just, it was just something that I, 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't say hate, but I didn't like winter. <laughs> maybe maybe next next year I'll give it another chance. But you know, the last one was was really tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, the other guys? Did you is like the winter similar to home countries, or is it colder in Sweden, or is it like mm -hmm. darker? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, if I can go ahead. Um, <laughs> It wasn't so much that the coldness shocked me. Maybe it's because I'm in Gothenburg, so it doesn't get too cold. It's more rainy and windy, but I'm used to that from <laughs> Vienna. Um, I think what, what I didn't expect was the extensive lack of sunlight. Um, yes. Like it's... That, that one hit me hard, um, both winters that I experienced now. So it's not really the cold, but that it's so gray. I think the sun goes up, goes up <laughs> at <laughs> 9 a.m., something around that time, and then already goes down at 3 p.m., which is crazy for me. So that was the hardest thing for me to deal with when it comes to Swedish winter. Otherwise, I kind of enjoy it winter here because yeah. you have so many other activities that you can do in winter that you can otherwise not do so it's it's really cool yeah, yeah. 
Well, well I, I could I, if I could add something to that because um, yeah. I think like in your parts of in in Gothenburg, I think it snows quite a, a bit. Yeah. But here, I think Tina would agree. Here in Malmo, when it's winter, it doesn't. It, the snow is not like what it's like in the northern parts of Sweden. And sometimes it's, it's just like slushy, slushy <laughs> and muddy <laughs> and dirty and gray. So you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I understand that maybe if you do see snow, then the, yeah. the cold is more bearable. But for us here, it's just yeah. cold. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing mm. else. It's cold yeah. and gray. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. What about you, Tina? Do you eat your D vitamins or? <laughs> Yeah, I actually do. I have actually I have nothing to add except one advice. Um, I got like this UV light lamp thing that you can put oh. on your desk. And then you kind of like you sit in front of it like a plant and kind of photosynthesize. Um, and that it, I think it kind of helps, even if it's just placebo. But if you sit in the winter in front of it every five or ten minutes after you wake up, it's it somewhat helps. I think that is one yeah. advice I can maybe give to viewers coming from warm countries because I grew up in a warm country as well. Um, that kind yeah. of like. It, it's one advice I would give to get like one of these lamps. You can get them on Amazon, whatever. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. I will, actually, I will actually consider that advice. I've been living, living here my whole <laughs> life and I haven't heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you yeah. adapt it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's also, I think it's important to add here <laughs> that like the northern parts of Sweden is uh, a lot more colder than the southern parts. Uh, and it is true that Sweden is cold, but houses are well built so you will never be cold indoors uh, and we have a saying maybe you guys have heard it before but there's no bad weather just poor clothes well it's a swedish saying which means it's like it's never too cold just layer it up <laughs> put on some warm clothes and if it's raining just put on some rain um, a rain coat or yeah rain protecting clothes so if you are like both excited but also a bit nervous about the Swedish weather, just know that you will probably survive, even though it's a big difference from your home country. <laughs> Would you say bad. no? <laughs> so, it's because you live in the same, and or Tina, do you live in Malmo or do you live outside Malmo? I live outside of Malmö, actually. I live a little bit above Lund, which is like kind of close to Malmö as well. But I don't live in a city directly. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was going to ask you about how you get around in your hometown. Town? Do you like use public transport? Do you ride your uh, bike or do you walk mostly? Uh, you can start, Tina. Yeah, sure. For me, it's kind of like um, because, you know, because of online studies, I didn't have to go to university that much. If I do, I use public transportation. Um, but I have to say it's really expensive, even with student discounts. So if possible, I always try to walk everywhere. But if I have to go to Mama alone, I will just take a bus and then a train. And that's like usually very convenient. The public transportation is really great, very fast, very clean. Usually they have Wi-Fi on the train as well, which I'm... Mm -hmm. So, very yeah. very much <laughs> enjoy <it. laughs> but yeah that's that's kind of how i get around despite like what swedish people feel like i'm not a biggest i'm not like biking so much so i don't have a bike um but i know a lot of people enjoy biking yeah, yeah. what about you jed because you live do you live in malmo yeah um i live yeah. in malmo so it's a very um i'd say a bike friendly uh city um it's very convenient to move around mm -hmm. So usually I hop on, and I live in an area where I'm 10 minutes away from everywhere. I'm 10 minutes from school. I'm 10 minutes away from the park, 10 minutes from, from the market. So um, mm -hmm. usually I just hop on my bike uh, to, to go around the, the town. But um, it, it was a completely different story when it was winter because I, was, yeah. I didn't like biking at all during winter. So then, like Tina, I would probably hop on uh, the bus more uh, during that time but but yeah but generally it's easy to move around malmo by bike yeah and what about you edvina do you it's the trams in gothenburg isn't it yeah yes exactly so i think i'm quite lucky to live in gothenburg because the public transport is really 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 good so you have very good infrastructure and this is also my main transportation that I use so I also don't have a bike I regret that a little bit because it's also a great city to to bike everywhere because it's also not that big um, but I get around by public transport so we have buses and um, trams 
um, but also by foot because I also live quite conveniently to university and the city center and supermarkets. I love to just walk everywhere as well um, because as Tina said before, it's the public transport is not the cheapest here. No. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's important to uh, speak about because public transport in Sweden works efficiently and is almost always on time. But it can be expensive and in the smaller cities it's probably easier to just um, buy a bike and bike around or walk around. It, it depends on the city you live in. And as Tina mentioned, you can also get a student discount on public transport cards. Oh, well, it's expensive, even though we get a discount, but at least it's something. And uh, speaking of uh, money, let's talk a little bit about budgeting and cost of living, because I can see a lot of questions in the live chats regarding this. Do you think Sweden is an expensive country to live in? Edwina, you can start. You think I it's expensive here? Yeah. Yeah, I think it depends w from where you're coming from. So me coming from Vienna, Austria, I would say, for example, going grocery shopping, it's quite the same. Um, I don't really feel a difference here. But for example, when it comes to housing, um, moving around, um, like public transportation and alcoholic beverage, yes, that's that's expensive. That's expensive, yeah. yes. Yeah. Tina, would you agree or? Yes, I agree. I just can say like it, it is quite expensive. Obviously, there are ways to manage, but um, it, it, it won't be the cheapest country. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, again, here, it also depends on where you live. Like in the bigger cities, it's probably a little, more, a little bit more expensive. And, and your monthly cost also depends on what lifestyles you have as well. And if I may add, uh, this is actually the reason why I moved to kind of outside of Malmo because of the rent, because it is a lot cheaper than to live exactly in the big cities, which is where I, I kind of like I took it because it's online studies. Anyway, I decided I might as well save on rent. So mm, kind of, yeah. yeah. Mm. And you'll need a minimum of 8,694 uh, kroners, Swedish kroners per month uh, to cover like living costs. Uh, and like rent and everything. Uh, and this minimum is calculated by the Swedish uh, Migration Office and it also has relevance when applying for a residence permit. So that's mm -hmm. something to have in mind at least. And as I said before, you probably, or not probably, but it depends on your lifestyle, how much you spend each month. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any like budget hacks being an international student in Sweden? Uh, I have, um, well, I could share. Um, yeah. I don't, I, I love to cook, like even back home uh, in the Philippines, I, I used to love to cook uh, my own food. So here in Sweden, eating out can be quite expensive. Um, there's yeah. not a lot of like street food stalls or like cheaper um, food options here. Like most of the places here are, are quite expensive. So one way for you to save a lot of money is you have to cook your own food. Uh, even if you go to, to university, for example, like like in Malmo, we have a lot of microwaves um, um, for students where you can just bring your lunch, heat it up and eat it. So that's that's definitely one way to uh, save up on, on money. Yeah, that's a really good tip. So if you don't know how to cook yet, uh, so <laughs> learn how to cook before coming. You're forced to. Yeah. You're, you're forced to. The first thing you should do before moving to Sweden: learn how to cook. Yes. Yes. Learn how to cook. It doesn't yeah. have to be. It doesn't have to be good as long as you're full. That that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I I would also say that if you, for example want to go out and eat outside i think it's very smart to go to places that cater to students um mm -hmm. which means student bars international bars cafes and restaurants around the university so they tend to be a little bit cheaper um, and also getting membership cards for supermarkets and cafes or downloading apps like, for example, Too Good To Go, where you can save food from getting thrown away for a very 
reasonable price so it's cheaper as well um so these are also like s small tips and tricks that you can use when yeah. coming to sweden and speaking of like membership and stuff it's also good to get a national uh, student discount card because it will give you access to a lot of great deals like in shops, online stores, cafes, gyms, restaurants, and everything. Uh, and this card is not your university specific card, but uh, it's a national student discount card. Uh, it's usually the student unions at the universities that uh, is in charge of the process of getting such a card. So make sure to check that out. All the people watching who's coming to Sweden. <laughs> Tina, what about you? Do you have any like hacks? I have one very here? specific hack, um, which is learn how to cut your own hair. Because hairdressers, yeah. I saw a comment about it, they're expensive in yeah. Sweden. And unless you want like a full blonde ombre beach dye, whatever, um, just like cutting <laughs> your ends, it's quite easy to learn. I just look it up on YouTube and then like I'm good to go and that saves a lot of money. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, or don't do it at all and then your hair looks <laughs> like this. <laughs> But it also saves you some money, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was also expecting that before coming here because when I applied for the Swedish uh, uh, SI scholarship back then, I had really short hair. And then I was like, oh, if I make it, I'm going to be in Sweden um, in a year. So I just started growing my hair out because I just because <laughs> back in the Philippines, I used to get a haircut like every month. You know, it, it, was, it yeah. was quite cheap. But here you can't do that. So I was like, you know what, I'll just grow out my hair so i don't have to spend money on haircuts and you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> the best time grow, <laughs> grow out your hair don't, <laughs> don't get a haircut <laughs> yeah but speaking of money do you mostly pay with cash or your uh, debit or credit card and if you do pay with a like, credit card was the process of opening a bank account like difficult Edwina, would you yeah. like to <laughs> uh, So I never use my debit card as much as I use it here in Sweden. Like I have no cash with me whatsoever since I arrived in Sweden because a lot of places, they don't even take cash exactly. anymore. Uh, so it's really very, like you can only get by by card or swish with which we can maybe talk later. Um, but the thing is, I have not opened a bank account. So I am still using my bank card and my bank account from Vienna. So I have not put myself through that process yet. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's see if that might change. But yeah, it was yeah. a bit more convenient for me to just stay with, with my old bank back home. Yeah, because getting a Swedish credit card can be kind of tricky uh, because you'll need a Swedish personal identity number, which you can only get if you have a residence permit uh, for at least 12 months or if you're an EU citizen, of course. Um, and you might also need a Swedish identity card as well. Uh, this information you can check with your university. They will always ha have up-to-date info about opening a bank account. Because as Edwina said, Sweden is the cashless society. <laughs> I never have cash on me. Um, yeah. Uh, and actually, Edwina, if you would like to uh, just tell the audience about Swish, is that um, and if you have a book or do you can you have I don't have no 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 no, no, you no, don't no. Have <laughs> but, but all the people around me use it oh, so yeah. i i kind of know what it is but not really it's yeah, yeah. but maybe 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 you want to tell me <laughs> <laughs> well basically it's an app uh, but you need to have a bank account a swedish bank account to access this app it's yeah, it's just an app where you can transfer money, just swish. <laughs> it's super like convenient and it's a smooth way of transferring money. And most like cafes and shops and everything uses swish as well. And um, yeah, it's an inside hack from a Swedish 
a Swedish person. <laughs> uh, but let's move on talking a little bit about a person, personal identity number and what that like enables you in Sweden. Because, uh, Tina, you had a personal identity number. Uh, I can just start off with some information about this because if you're an international student who has a residence permit for at least 12 months, or if you're an EU citizen, as I said previously, and an EU citizen and is admitted for studies for 13 months or more, you're, you are eligible for applying for a Swedish personal identity number. And you can apply for it when you register in the Swedish population system through the Swedish uh, tax agency called Skatteverket. <laughs> it's widely used throughout your daily life in Sweden for memberships, yeah, and Swish, <laughs> uh, subscriptions, and uh, to open a bank account, uh, or if you want to join like an insurance plan or anything like that. Um, and it also enables you to get the same health care as Swedish citizens as well. Uh, yeah, and you'll need it for applying for a Swedish identity card as well. Because, you know, you have a personal or you, yeah, you have a personal identity number. Do you think it was like the process of getting it was, was it like taking up a lot of time? Did you find it to be hard to do it or like complicated or yeah? From my personal experience, I found it quite easy, actually, I would say. Obviously, it's like a lot of bureaucratic stuff. You have to fill out documents and everything. But I personally found it quite easy, and I received my personal number within, I think, like three or four weeks when I came here, so quite a good time. But I know that not everyone has this experience and that some people struggle with it or take some extra time or something. But for me personally, it was quite good. But I actually, mm -hmm. I just have the number, but I don't get the card because I figured, you know, I can, like, you have to pay extra money for the card, and I was like, no, I'm mm. going to do that. <laughs> so I just have the number now, and if anyone needs it, I will just tell them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say it's easy. Yes. Yeah, and yet you do not have a personal identity number. Do you find that to be like troubling, or yeah. is it easy, anyways? Or what do you think? Um, since I don't have a personal number, I don't have access to quite a number of services. So, for example, I can't get a phone plan. Um, mm. uh, I also can't open a bank account. And I remember before um, I was trying to get my third dose of the vaccine here. And mm. that was also quite challenging. Like, I, I needed a personal number to, to get vaccinated, which, again, for international students like myself who did not have personal numbers, you know, we didn't know what to do. So that was kind of um, kind of a, a, a messy situation for me back then. So I would say that comparing it, I mean, I've, I've lived here for um, a couple of months already without a personal number. So I mean, I've, I've still survived somehow. So it's not like yeah. you need it to survive here, but you definitely would have a much better experience if you do have it. Yeah. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're only going to be here for a year because you're not going to be uh, granted a personal number. Yeah. Yeah. Things get a little bit more complicated, but mm -hmm. one thing that's important is also if you if you're not eligible for a personal identity number, it's important that you get a um, insurance plan mm -hmm. because otherwise it can be very expensive for you to uh, visit Swedish healthcare. And talking about Swedish healthcare, and have you guys in like? Have you come in contact with the Swedish healthcare or did you find it easy to get in contact? Or, Edwina, what about you? Have you gotten in contact with the Swedish healthcare? Yes, yes, um, I have. I felt like at the beginning it was a bit challenging for me to understand where I can find information about that because it. it it is different from from what I'm used to back home in Austria. Uh, so I, I, I have to say that it was quite convenient for me to have Swedish friends who know the system and they could assist me and help me. And now I know um, where to get help when I need medical advice or when I have to seek a doctor. Um, but it, it was quite a process, I have to say. And also at the beginning, 
circling back to the Swedish identity card or personal number, I didn't have that at the beginning as well because I applied for it quite late. So when I went to seek out the doctor for the first time and didn't have my identity number, it was quite a long process of them having to set up like a medical number for me. And then, yeah, it was it was quite a hustle. But now now it's easy. Once you're in, yeah. once you're in the system, it's it's all good. Yeah. Uh, was that, is it very expensive for you? Um, n- no. No. So what I understood is that now every time when I visit a doctor, I only pay a fee of like 150 or 200 sec. It's like 15 or 20 euros. So quite a small amount. And I think in Sweden, maybe Julia, correct when I'm wrong. um, But if you get to a certain threshold, um, I think in Sweden, it's 200 euros then from then on the your healthcare insurance is paying everything else right yeah. Yeah. but up until this threshold you you have to pay every time when you go to the yeah but a very small amount as i understood yeah, yeah. i'm not really sure about the exact amount but mm-hmm. you are correct that like now i say the the government but the people yeah. <laughs> from the state will help you and if you spend crazy a lot of money on like um medical or like Mm -hmm. health yes i'm losing my word health care health care yeah searching for it and what about you tina have you visited the swedish health care uh, no, I have no experience with the Swedish healthcare, so I can't no. talk on that. If I have to get like any appointments or if I get medication, I will just go to Germany and get it there. Okay, mm. yeah. yeah. Uh, but Edwina, can I ask you then, was it tricky speaking English at your visit or, yeah, was it hard to communicate? Or I mean... Find- I mean, of course, it depends uh, which doctor you get and how their personal level of English is. So that's a bit hard to say. I had doctors who were quite capable of explaining everything to me in in Swedish, of course, but also in English and guiding me through the whole process in English. But I also had two experiences where their English was was not so good so it was more like a swinglish so a little bit of swedish and english in between but but they're so friendly and they really they really try to to help you so that the friendliness i really experienced in the swedish healthcare system yeah and the willingness to help exactly and one thing you also can use if you're the ones who's watching, if you're going to access the Swedish health uh, care system uh, and maybe a bit nervous about the language barriers, you can also use apps. Like you can speak and the app will say everything in Swedish. Just an inside hack as well, <laughs> if you are nervous about it. Um, but let's move on to packing what was the most important thing you brought to sweden and the least important thing you brought or the most like un- oh, yeah unnecessary thing tina would you like to start <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think about it. i think well i could say the most important thing was like my phone and my laptop but yeah. i don't know <laughs> but yeah. that's kind of the bad answer um I would say one thing is kind of like um, if you have like something kind of sentimental, like a certain blanket or a book or like a stuffed animal or something that you bring with you, I think that can be kind of important in a way because it might cure like homesickness. And least important, maybe like I bought like a bunch of like pens for some reason because I was like, I'm going to write all my notes in the lectures. And then I had mm-hmm. to travel with all these pens, which I used once maximum. So that was like a kind of unnecessary purchase especially because you can get pens in sweden so <laughs> i think that yeah. was yeah so, yeah <laughs> i can see someone in the chat writing warm coats <laughs> what do you think jed what was the most important thing in the most or the least important thing you brought uh well i brought uh some like some 
trinkets back from home like the stuff that i used to have in my room like so so little like statues and stuff mm -hmm. so again like what tina said it's good to remind you of it's good to have a little bit that reminds you of home in your room because i mean if you live abroad alone for the especially for the first time it tends to get lonely so it's good to like maybe have pictures of your family your friends just to kind of get reminded of of you know the love that you have back home yeah. and i also have uh, a friend a good friend of mine also gave me a winter jacket so he was just like yeah you can just have this bring it with you which came pretty handy because i didn't have a winter jacket before so um so yeah warm coats definitely is one of the most important things that i learned <laughs> yeah <laughs> what about you edwina or maybe yeah. you have like, some bad, uh, best tips when it's when it comes to packing for your journey to sweden um, well, so for me, I'm not really a sentimental person when it comes to like materialistic things. So I didn't really pack anything of those. <laughs> um, but for me, it was quite important to pack everything that seems expensive. Like, for example, a really good um, winter coat or jacket. That's quite expensive. So I didn't want to make this big purchase here. So I brought it with me to Sweden or like really good winter boots and stuff like that. But I think it's important, like as a tip, when you have to pack for Sweden, I think just, you know, if you have your pile of clothes that you want to pack <clears throat> and you already think like, oh, this is, this is not so much, divide it again and just take half of it with you because you're going to accumulate so much more stuff when you were here in Sweden believe me I, I regret that I took as much stuff as I did and I remember I was thinking like oh this is not so much but yeah it's it was too much and now I have even more stuff and so yeah. really just pack the most necessary things yeah. yeah it seems like the best way to pack is like a mix between emotional things and practical things and as you said, Tina, about the pens, <laughs> I saw someone again say, saying, true, you can buy, get pens in Sweden and you can get anything in Sweden. Yes. So, and also um, snacks. Yeah. I, I just saw uh, someone comment here, Charlene comment here, that you need to bring snacks from your home country. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Like uh, I, I, there's a couple of Asian stores in Malmo which sell some Filipino snacks, but they're so much more expensive. So I, I made sure to bring, uh, you know, a couple of, of snacks from, from back home. Yeah, that's a good advice. I also saw another comment about um, if you can find like groceries and ingredients from your home countries in Sweden, do you find that to be like difficult to find or have you tried to find anything in specific or? For for me, um, the Asian store that are here in Malmo, like all of the Asian stores that I went to had some Filipino um, ingredients. So most yeah. of the things that I need are, are there. Oh, you so can for, find it. Yeah. So for Asian cuisine, it's it's I don't think it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the German cuisine, Tina? Well, I know you can find salt everywhere and that's kind of like the only yeah. white people's spice. <laughs> I don't know. But I think in general, there's like a really good selection of everything in the grocery stores. Yeah. Even. And if you need like something very specific, you can usually get it in like one of the, how do you say, like the gourmet like departments. Oh, yeah. 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 But have you tried any like weird Swedish food yet? <laughs> or do you find <laughs> Swedish food to be weird? <laughs> Did we know what about you? I, I think maybe the most crazy Swedish thing I tried was um, pickled fish, pickled herring. Um, I really liked it. You um, did? <laughs> yeah, I like it too. It's my favorite. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's good. Like every time when I tell people that they're quite surprised, but I really, I really enjoyed that. I liked it. Yeah. Thank you, Jad, for joining yeah. me. <laughs> I like the one with uh, the one that that comes with mustard. That's my favorite. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, that's mm. really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My dad always tried to force me to eat it, but I refuse. That's not for me. <laughs> what? So we're, oh my God. so we're more Swedish than you, then. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But I feel like otherwise, Swedish food, I mean, like traditional Swedish food, it's like this Husmanskost. 
Yeah. Um, and it's quite similar, I feel like, to traditional Austrian food or German food. So it's nothing to that, that I'm not used to, let's say it that way. But the pickled fish is definitely something you all should try out there. And it's, <laughs> I think it's worth it. It's, it's very good. <laughs> Yeah, but do you eat it by itself or do you have like potatoes and... I actually love to just eat it out of the <laughs> jar. <laughs> like pickles, I think it's very, yeah. I think it's delicious. Like a Friday snack. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just laying in bed, watching Netflix, <laughs> eating pickled fish. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm going to try to start eating it as well. Maybe I'll get another... And you should, you should. The hawk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's move on talking a little bit about the Swedish language. It's actually going to be like a true or false uh, segment. So I will say a statement and you guys are just going to let us know if it's true or okay. false. So first up is... I need to know Swedish to get around in Sweden. Tina, you can start. Is this true or is it false? I would say it's false. Um, basically, every person I've met in Sweden speaks perfect English, no matter the age. Um, and if they don't, they will try their very best to get uh, to speak it. Um, I think they even they prefer to speak English. I feel sometimes they they don't really want you to. They want to practice their English. I kind of feel like mm, yeah. so I feel like um, you don't need Swedish at all to get around in Sweden at all. Great. <laughs> so the next one is actually I don't even know. Uh, we don't even know to have to address this. But my next statement was Swedes love speaking English, <laughs> and yeah, obviously as Tina said. We do. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to the next one. Uh, I've struggled a bit not speaking Swedish. Jed, is this true or is it mm, false? I'd say true mm. because, for example, um, if I meet, uh, it, it's still different if you talk to a Swedish person in English and in Swedish because, you know, things might not mean the same. And I feel like you'll, you'll, be able to connect more to a Swedish person if you talk to them in Swedish, even if like, most Swedish people that I've met are very fluent in English. So I've struggled a bit in really, I would say, immersing myself into Swedish culture because I don't speak English. And then sometimes um, I would kind of feel bad because if there's like a group of Swedish people that I'm with, I feel like they're just forced to speak English because I'm there. And I mean, maybe they'd rather just talk Swedish themselves. But I mean, they're all, but I find that very polite of them because they really take time to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to really talk to me and still include me in the conversation, even if I don't uh, know how to speak Swedish. But, you know, I'm in the process of trying to learn Swedish. So hopefully mm -hmm. I, I get to, to learn a little bit in the coming months. Yeah. Uh, actually, my ne next statement is, can you study Swedish for free? Edwina, is this true or false? Yes, I mean, for, <laughs> I mean, for me as a um, EU citizen, it's for free. Um, but I can, of course, not speak for students or international students outside of the EU, because as far as I know, then you have to pay. But for me and for Tina, it's for free. Yes. Yeah. Because it's actually, there are free online courses listed at studyingsweden.se. Uh, some are free for everyone, but you can also find paid online courses uh, offered by private organizations. Uh, and you'll find courses that suit your level, level if you're just a beginner or you know some Swedish. Uh, and some of the Swedish universities also offer uh, Swedish uh, language courses as well. So make sure to check that out. But yeah, as you said, you will get around in Sweden without speaking uh, Swedish. Uh, and we love to speak English, honestly. <laughs> but we're trying to be like international. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, oh, that's good to hear, Jill, because sometimes I feel like maybe uh, Swedish people would be like annoyed, like 
uh, uh, now I have to speak English because he's here. So you actually, so Swedes actually enjoy English. So yeah. that's coming from you. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's good. From a true Swede. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's, that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> but I also have a question though. Like, what's your perspective? For example, if I'm trying to learn Swedish, mm -hmm. so for so my Swedish is going to be like quite messy, I would say. Mm -hmm. So if I try to talk to you in Swedish and you know that I am struggling and I am trying to learn, like, what would your response be? Would you be like, okay, I'm just because sometimes I order food in Swedish just to practice. Yeah. Right? So, I, so I'd say like, uh, well, my favorite is falafel, like, yasko uh, the falafel rule. And then if they say, if they hear like, okay, he's trying to learn swedish they just talk to me in english instead and i find that so frustrating because i'm trying to learn you should talk to me yeah swedish. yeah like, so you yeah. want the falafel rule i'm like yeah i want the falafel rule. Just <laughs> yeah. falafel well i think it yeah. depends on who you meet but <clears throat> as someone said previously that sweets are usually they like very like helpful and maybe that's the thing if they maybe if you struggle a bit if you're just in the start, like um, learning Swedish, they want to help you out by speaking mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. But just speak Swedish, even though we respond in English. <laughs> I think that's the best way. Or just tell them, uh, yeah, I'm trying to learn Swedish, so mm -hmm. I'm going to speak Swedish with you. <laughs> yeah. um, we do not have a lot of time left. But I want to talk a little bit, bit about housing and accommodation because I can see in the live chat we get um, or we have gotten a lot of questions about that. Mm -hmm. So can you please tell us um, how's your living situation and uh, where do you live and was it hard to find accommodation in the cities you live in? Edwina, would you like to start? Yes. So um, right now I live in the basement of a huge house, um, of a huge family house. And I live in the basement together with another international student. And we each have our own separate bedrooms. And then we only share the kitchen and the bathroom together. Um, and I found this accommodation through Blockets, which is a Swedish website where it's it's kind of a marketplace. So uh, you can find lots of stuff there, but also um, rooms that are rented out or even whole accommodations. And yeah, I, I actually found my current accommodation through that website. So you should definitely go and check that one out. Yeah, but before I lived in another apartment and that one I found through Facebook uh, groups, which is also quite helpful. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. What about you, Jed? How, how's your yeah. living situation? Where do you live? Um, I live in the in Celsius Garden. It's the student housing provided by mm -hmm. Malmo University. So as an international uh, fee paying student, uh, you're given priority for, for housing. So I remember mm -hmm. So for me, it wasn't quite, it wasn't difficult to find uh, accommodation at all because after I got admitted to my program, I also received an email about uh, applying for housing. So I'm not sure if it's the same for other universities, but in, in, in my case, in Malmo, they, if you are an international fee paying student, you're eligible for student housing. So they will prioritize you for that. But even so, you have to make sure that once you get that offer, you apply right away because it's a first come first served basis so mm. you know they a lot of people are applying for it so make sure you apply right away mm. that's a really good tip to check with the university you got admitted to because a lot of them offer housing in some ways or they can help you where you can um um find accommodation even though it's not connected to the university uh, but tina how did you uh, manage to get hold of your current accommodation was that through your um, university as well? The current one, not um, in the first place, like I moved once I came to Sweden. The first time I lived in a shared apartment um, with another international student and I looked at one of the websites that the university email sent out as well. Mm -hmm. And I did that immediately as soon as I got admitted, like the same day I was started looking for housing. And oh, then nice. after one year, I moved into the place I'm in now, which I'm sharing with my partner. And I found it in like this website called Casa or something like that. It was a bit unconventional, but um. 
it worked out. I've been living here for two years. Yes. Mm. And otherwise, I can recommend Facebook groups very greatly as well. There are a lot of scams, but there are a lot of good mm. options as well. So just use your common sense. Yeah. Do you find, or what about the rent? Is that also like expensive in Sweden? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't wait yeah. to say it. It is, it is incredibly expensive. Um, even yeah. working jobs yeah. and, and having extra support, it is very expensive. <clears throat> Even living outside of the city, so because I don't live directly in the city, maybe Edwina Ajet can answer it better. But um, even living a little bit outside of the city, it is very expensive. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also to add here that, again, like the bigger cities are usually uh, the more expensive when it comes to rent and also like lifestyles. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But what I about could... Yeah. Yeah, yes. I could share because I, I I've read a question in the chat a couple of minutes mm -hmm. ago asking about if because I have the SI scholarship. So the SI scholarship yeah. were given um, exactly. a stipend of uh, around 10,000 crowns per month. So I saw someone ask here if that's enough um, mm -hmm. to, to live in Sweden. But just to give you uh, a, like an actual computation. So I get 10,000 a month from the Swedish Institute and almost half of that, which is around 4,500 crowns is what I pay for rent. So that's how much I'm paying for the place that I live in now. So you're mm -hmm. left with a little over 5,000 crowns for, you know, for groceries, for public transport, you know, for leisure and stuff. So I would say that if you live a modest, just, just you know, if you, if you live within your means and you don't go out a lot, then maybe um, 10,000 crowns would be enough. But if, you know, if you like to go shopping, if you like to go out, eat, and, and drink and go to clubs and everything definitely you're gonna have to find you know um other ways to to earn so he, yeah. like tina said part-time jobs is, is definitely an option speaking of like part-time jobs i also saw a question in the chat regarding this do you think or do you have a part-time job yeah, obviously you do because yeah, the people watching these, um, uh, Tina, uh, Edwina, and Jed are also studying Sweden's digital ambassadors. So that's your part-time job, you could say. But do you have anything more than that, or would you say that? Would you say that you have the time to have a part-time job? I mean, this is more like integrated into your daily life. But would you say, like? I'm about to say like a real part-time job. I mean, where you like need to go to work uh, at another like place. Do you think that like manageable, or what would you say? Mm, I uh, could, yeah, Edwina, go ahead. I, I answered uh, the last one. Okay. So you can, go, um, you can start, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, no, uh, so I, yeah. I, besides studying in Sweden and my full-time study, um, I also have another job uh, on top of that. Um, and it is manageable um, because I'm doing it for now with studying in Sweden one year now. Um, but to be honest, I mean, if I would have the chance not to do it, of course, I would not take on two jobs and study on the side. But for me, the thing is that I do not get any financial support from outside. I don't get any scholarships. I don't get any government finance finances and also no like financial support from my family. It's just not possible. So I have to sustain myself. And that's why I have to take on one or two jobs to yeah get by <laughs> but it, it but it is manageable like if i can do it everyone can do it yeah yeah, yeah. what about you tina do you have a part-time job or yeah i do as well and i think that um it always depends on the program because i wouldn't say that my program is easy but i don't think i need to spend like hours every day um to keep up um, so I think if you have like a very intense program that you're doing, um, it might not be possible to have one or two part-time jobs. Um, mm -hmm. But if it's a little bit easier, you might get by. And I know there's some questions in the chat about um, getting a part-time job without speaking Swedish. And from what I know, it is a little bit more difficult or it's quite difficult to get one. But there are always options and possibilities um, and especially... Uh, on Facebook as well. There are always job announcements, especially working from home, freelancing. There are mm -hmm. job opportunities 
Yeah. Much, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, just to add here, even though it's, it's manageable, like the full time studies are still like the priority. And so it's going to be if you need a part time job, job, I don't, I don't know, you can add here, Edwina, is it like, you need to juggle everything? Is it just hard to keep your mind on track? Or do you? Is it all right? <laughs> it's 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 all right. I think just now it got a bit harder for me because I also have the master thesis, mm -hmm. and because this is like the last final thing that I want to excel. Of course, I feel like I'm stressing myself out much more than usual because the last months and the the last year it was quite easy for me to to juggle the jobs and the, the full-time study because, I mean, you have to keep in mind, you need to have a good time management. Of course, that's important. But I feel like the Swedish universities, they give you a lot of, of freedom. And it's like, maybe this is... Okay, so for example, if you, if you fail um, an essay or an exam at a Swedish university, you always have the possibility to redo them. So I feel like this, at least for me, took off a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and it helped me to relax a little bit more and made it more able for me to juggle job and university. But at the end, it worked out like I never had to redo anything or I think just one essay. And it was it was it was really fine. Yeah. Actually, now we've been speaking for almost an hour. The time goes by so fast when you have fun. <laughs> Do you have any like final words for the audience? Like the best tips for moving to Sweden or Sweden in general? Do you have any like advices to them? Jed, you can start. Mm, uh, only advice is uh, time flies. So enjoy every moment. Like the other day, I remember I was just laying in bed uh, when I was trying to go to sleep and I just realized like, oh, wow, I've been here for eight months and it doesn't feel like I've been here for eight months. And especially if you live in, for example, like me, I live in student housing. So there are some Erasmus students that live here as well who only stay here for a shorter period of time. So people come and go. And, you know, you're going to meet a lot of people. And then before you know it, they're gone. They're leaving. So my only tip is, uh, like, enjoy every moment. Like, make the most out of this opportunity. Like, coming to Sweden, studying here, living here mm. could be one of the most amazing experience of your life. And I'm sure Tina and Edwina would agree. And it would be a shame for you to end your studies. If I mean, it's, it's great if you end up staying here and working here. But it would be such a shame for you to finish your program, come home and then start thinking like, oh, I wish I could have done this. I wish I could have done this more. I wish I could have enjoyed the sun more because of, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, so enjoy every moment because time flies. Yeah. You know. Tina, what about you? Do you have any like final words? <laughs> Um, I would say I'm sure a lot of people watching this are already aware of this, but Study in Sweden also has like a very amazing website with all the information covered. And we have Instagram as well, where Edwina yeah. and me and some of the students share their lives and obviously YouTube with Jed. So um, I think really make use of these resources because Study in Sweden also existed when I came to Sweden first and it definitely helped me, especially with all like the bureaucratic like Mm -hmm. things like yeah. the, the the number how to apply what you have to do i think it is um really helpful and it answers basically all the important questions yeah also to add here <clears throat> sorry uh studying in sweden.se is a go-to for everything we've talked about today and also i saw in the chat that someone wrote like keep on going this is super useful uh, later on today, we have two more of these um, this live streams called Prepare Yourself. No, not Prepare Yourself. Prepare for your Sweden journey. Uh, so if you want to learn even more about this, uh, make sure to join later uh, this day uh, as well for our other live streams at 2 and uh, 5 uh, Central European Summertime. Uh, Edwina, what about you? 
your final words. My and final words. Um, I, I feel like Tina and Chad, they covered it up so nicely. Maybe one last thing is search for accommodations now. Uh, it's never too early. Um, and yeah, just just enjoy your time. Enjoy every part of your journey in Sweden, even the cold winters, they have so much to offer and try to find beauty in everything you encounter. And don't be afraid to ask for help because people are very friendly and they're very eager to help. And we all are going through the same experience. So exactly. just ask if you need something. I think that's important to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. great piece of advice. And uh, yeah, to the audience, thank you so much for joining us here today. And big congratulations again for being accepted to a program in Sweden. You probably, or you have, you will have a um, an amazing journey ahead of you. And yeah, you're going to have super fun. Yeah. But with that being said, Thank you very much, guys, for joining as well, sharing your experiences of being an international student in Sweden. And yeah. Thank you. That was my Thank final you. words. Thank you. So I will end this live stream now. Bye, Bye guys. Bye -bye. <laughs>